Pangatok is a uh, community with a population of about 1,500 people. The majority of them are Inuit, a community where you will find a lot of the traditional life that is happening, but it's mixed with modern culture. It's a very vibrant community. There's lots of stuff that goes on. There's a weaving shop, there's a print shop, a little store with many carvings. The community thrives around what they know best and um, support themselves that way. Our culture is very community-based. Everybody is close to each other within the family group and everybody helps each other out. If one family is hungry, another family will offer food. Food security is very tough up here, especially in smaller communities. Um, flying in food is costly much more than driving it in. We came up with this project and we've had three workshops up till now, uh, all looking at the way that we're trying to create a, a more profound, safer community. My background is I'm a psychiatrist and I've worked with a lot of traumatized people in my career and I've learned some things about what happens to people when they get traumatized and how difficult it is to naturally create safety again. So we're going to go to the, table. the community is still working through many, many uh, impacts from the past. I know this and many other people in the community know this. All these things are really so closely interlinked. So. You cannot do economic development without strength building and addressing the social issues first because you need to have a population that is strong and capable to, to hold jobs. Inuit Illegate was founded three years ago. We were a fledgling society and we were struggling. We didn't have the expertise in town, we needed to kind of figure out how can we make ourselves sustainable. And that's when a friend of mine told me about Kessel. We ended up getting Gary Newton up here, who is a volunteer, a volunteer advisor, and he helped us set up our first business plan. And that included looking at a co making a coffee shop in addition to the soup kitchen and maybe getting catering business and then also acquire another building to do a sewing center. We have generated quite a number of partnerships. The local hunters association, they are providing us with food. With the local fish plant, they are providing us with an ongoing supply of char. We are having a partnership or connections with our local store. Another partnership we have with Kesso. They are offering very specifically expertise, professional expertise, that is not easy to find here in the north in an isolated community. It's just amazing how many people from faraway places care and are concerned and say, you let us know how we can help. It was a long road to make connections. Word spreads and networks are being built. We are in a very good position to chase our dreams. <laughs>